So we'll be beginning with vegetative morphology. So this includes stems, um, leaves, and roots are the major um, components. So we would think about things in terms of a system of shoots, which are the up above ground components and a system of roots below ground. And most of the parts that you need to understand are above ground for, for vegetation. So just in terms of terminology, to give you an orientation, we gave you an orientation to the plant tree of life. Now with a plant body, the dis distal is towards the tip and proximal is towards the base. And so apex or apical is the, the top of a tip of a leaf or the top of a shoot and basal would refer to very near the ground. So basal leaves. So one of the first things you wanna notice about a plant is its habit. And so this is reflective of both the growth form and the natural history of the plant. So when we think of annuals, California is a really spectacular place for annual plants, partly because this is a strategy or a life history strategy where a plant completes all of its reproduction within a single calendar year. So conditions that favor annuals are um, seasonality. So having really abundant spring rains and then maybe a really dry period later on. And then also a lot of interannual variability. So maybe having wet years or dry years. So this allows sometimes a spectacular spring bloom. So a place like the desert can be just full of wildflowers in a wet year. And then during a dry year, a lot of these plants can just kind of hang out in the seed bank, but they also tend to be prolific bloomers because once those seeds germinate and those plants begin to grow, it's, it's, they have to get to it, it's all or nothing. So they just have to channel all of their resources in doing the best they can to be able to set fruit and return to the seed bank to come back in another year. So that is one strategy and it's um, a huge proportion of what we think of as wildflowers and some of the showiest displays are part of the annual flora. And then um, perennials is the, the, another example of a life history straight stage, which is to, to live for more than one year. So this can take on a lot of different forms. Some plants die back or are in underground for dormant for part of the year and then re-sprout, or they may be like trees, which are very long lived and maybe drop their leaves in response to cold or drought, or some plants are evergreen and kind of maintain year round. And then there's also plants called biennials, which maybe are a rosette or just vegetative one year and then wait another year before they reproduce. But these terms can be a little bit flexible and they may be dependent on local conditions. So a, a what might be a biennial in one climate could be a perennial in California coastal climate. And so those are examples of herbs. Now looking at trees and shrubs, these are other perennials. And the difference between a tree and shrub is, is that a tree is normally has a single main trunk and it often very large. And then a shrub usually has multiple smaller trunks and is typically smaller. And then one other term that you may encounter in the Jepson eflora is subshrub, which is perennial, and it has kind of a woody base, but tends to sort of die back. So it's it's kind of intermediate between a, a shrub and an herb with just um, woody some woody basal parts. So we're getting into the basic fundamentals of um, plant morphology. So these are some critical terms to orient yourself. Um, so here is the stem or the central axis, and each of these are the leaves. So the best way to identify a leaf is to look for this axillary bud. So the axle is the point where the leaf meets the stem and this bud will be right here. So in the points along the stem at which the leaves arise are called the nodes. And the space in between the nodes are the internodes. So getting into a little bit more detail on the leaf, Again, here we have an axillary bud and stipules are leaf-like structures that are not always present, but when they are present in certain families like the rosaceae or the fabaceae, they can be really critical for species level identification. The petiole is the word for the leaf stalk. Pulvinae or pulvinus are more specialized terms that 
are pertain to specific families and are not present in most leaves. Um, the veins of the leaf, so this is the blade is the entire laminar surface or the flat surface of the leaf. And again, the apex is the tip of the leaf. The margin, it can have a lot of important characters. So that's basically the edge of the leaf. And then also thinking about the orientation of the leaf in space, the adaxial surface is the upper surface and the abaxial surface is the lower surface. So you can think about that in orientation to the axis, the adaxial surface is facing upward usually. And then abaxial, you can think below for the underside of the leaf. And then leaf arrangement is also really critical. Some of the, the first things you wanna look at for identifying a plant. So this is alternate. So leaves are alternating on one and the other side very often or one leaf per node. Here are opposite leaves where two leaves are arising together from the same node. And then this condition is a little less common but is, is very similar to opposite except that there's more than two leaves. There's three or more leaves per node in a whorl. Now we're gonna get into a little bit of leaf division. So again, um, this is one of the things that is usually challenging for people who are first getting oriented to plants is why isn't this 10 leaves and not just one leaf? So this is the point where this axillary bud becomes a really critical thing to look for because you will not have buds present in, in the leaflets. So if you look at this, this is basically just a, a single leaf that has been modified to appear like many leaves. So this is an even pinnate, which basically means that there's an even number of leaflets. And then odd pinnate is an odd number of leaflets, which usually means that there is a single terminal leaflet. And again, you wanna check for that axillary bud to see if you're dealing with multiple leaves, opposite leaves or an alternate leaf with leaflets. And here is palmate arrangement. So this is a point where all the leaflets are originating from a single point. You could think of um, buckeyes or esculus as a good example. And this is trifoliolate. So this is one of my pet peeves is to call this a trifoliate leaf, which would literally mean three leaves. But because these are three leaflets, we use the diminutive form trifoliolate. And then here we are with a more complex variation of the structure, which is a, a compound leaf, which is bipinnate or twice pinnate. And this leaf division is especially important in ferns and trying to understand ferns is breaking down how many times the leaves are divided. And in some plants you can get them three times or four times divided, but typically we're dealing with simple leaves or compound leaves. And there's just a few things you know, you can imagine um, the APACE, the carrot family, can have very highly divided leaves. Um, another thing that can be really important is the veination. So again, um, looking at the terminology is, can be important. Reticulate is veins that come together or form a network or like a net. Um, and there's just a huge amount of variation in, in leaves. So again, this is not always the most important feature when it comes to keying a plant. And some of the, the nuance in leaf description can be really hard to translate into verbal description. But once you really become familiar, or you study a leaf and get to know it, you can kind of really understand that plant because the architecture of the veinations, veination can tell you so much about a plant or about a family. So it's just one of those things to sort of pay attention to and you, you'll learn a lot that's maybe not always written in the key. Um, but there is a lot of literature and there has been a lot of study because if you, if you think about um, the field of paleontology, dealing with paleobotany, dealing with fossils, a lot of times the only thing you have to see a record of a, of a plant that lived in historic times will be some sort of a fragment or even an impression of the leaf and in that case, the veins are everything, it becomes really, really important. So there's a lot of knowledge out there about leaf veins, but it's just something to, to pay attention to. It really helps you get to know a plant. So here's a, another example of veination. This is parallel veination, and this is very typical of plants in the group 
monocots, which include grasses are the classic example, lilies. So this is really common within that group and less common in eudicots and other groups. And then getting into leaf shape, here are some of the most common forms. Ovate or egg-shaped is widest near the base. Obovate is the opposite, widest towards the apex of the leaf. Elliptic is widest right near the middle. And then oblong is more or less parallel sided. So here are those same three shapes again. And then a linear leaf, you could think of there's some willows, that's a classic willow. Or lanceolate is supposed to be lance shaped or sort of like the, the tip of a spear, you can think. And then chordate is really a heart shape kind of leaf. So then we get into um, the shape of the leaf apex, which can also be really informative. So acute and obtuse are an angle less than 90 degrees or greater than 90 degrees. Acuminate and attenuate are really similar in that the apex comes to a point, but how it tapers, whether it's a gradual taper or an abrupt taper is the difference between acuminate and attenuate. And then, um, Retuse and emarginate don't exist in the Jepson in Jepsonese. I think this, this would be described as notched within the Jepson manual. Um, mucronate basically means having a little um, projection at the apex of the leaf and rounded is pretty self-explanatory. So see, these are some of the basic forms of leaf apex. Now leaf bases have some of the same terminology acute, obtuse, and then cunea in the Jepson manual will be referred to as wedge-shaped. So it's sort of a straight angled um, leaf base, rounded, decurrent. So the base of the leaf is decurrent onto the petiole. Chordate, again, is that sort of heart-shaped leaf base. Lobate would might be used, the terminology lobed could be used. And then Sagittate is a really distinctive leaf shape. Um, so Sagittaria, those aquatic plants are characterized by this unusual leaf shape. So moving on to um, a bit more of, about the margin. So this is an unlobed simple leaf. This is also a simple leaf, but with lobes. Entire margins are with, with no teeth. The dentate is having these broad teeth that are projecting outwards or perpendicular to the central axis or the mid rib of the leaf. And then serrate are, are a little bit curved. So serrate is the same word as uh, sierra or saw. So you can think of them as sort of like saw tooths, saw teeth. And then doubly serrate, sometimes there's sort of teeth on top of teeth. Um, erose would be in the Jepson manual, irregular. So having kind of a without um, a regular pattern. And then crenate is with these sort of rounded teeth. And then looking at the shape of the margin in a, in a different plane. So plane would just be totally flat. And then revolute is what the Jepson manual would call rolled under where the margins of the leaf are sort of curled under. And so the last thing that I'm going to mention is that there's just an enormous diversity of hair types. So hairs in glands and Malvasi especially has these wonderful kind of star shaped hairs, but that's really, you know, once you get in there with your hand lens and really get to know a plant and, or get it under a microscope, you can kind of see this amazing world of, of great detail. So um, with that, I think we will, um, we can go to the chat. And if you guys have any questions about vegetative morphology, we can take um, a few minutes there.